see uh, right there, it's almost like we want to put the origin right here. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. So we're imagining, right, a circle here. It's going to go like, going to go this way in a way. I should be able to drag it out and back. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide the gray plane here. If I go to the settings in the upper right corner, that gear, I'll shut off the plane, but I'll turn, I'll keep the axes turned on because that'll uh, help me in a bit. See them right there, right? So uh, let's go back to 3D. We'll build it there in a way. The X axis is red, the Y axis is green. Again, the usual coordinate plane, which we live far too often in right here, but the Z axis sticks out at you normally when you look at it. And so there it is going up and down in blue. Okay. So in that particular swing, we had um, a big radius, which we'll call R. We'll make it a slider. Okay. And we also had uh, the, the radius of the actual ring itself, which we're going to call little r. Okay. So let's just get the sliders up there and we'll show you again the logic here. Okay. We're going to call big R the distance from here to the center of uh, the cross-sectional circle there. All right. And little r is going to be the radius of this, cro this circular cross-section right here. All right. So let's actually go ahead and um, we, won't, we won't put an AR quite yet. We got it. We're going to build it first. Even though we could build it in AR, I like to build it here. All right. So let's actually plot the point R0,0. zero. zero. And that'll just go right on the x-axis there. Like that. And so notice I can, I can actually drag point A itself. That'll actually move the big R slider, uh, as you see right there. But I want to let A get bigger. So if I go to the settings gear right here, the three dots on the big R line, I'm going to go to settings, and I'm going to make that max go to, say, 20. And we'll make a min of, say, 0. All right? I'm going to do the same for little r as well. All right, I like to give myself a lot of wiggle room, a lot of playroom here when I uh, play in AR. All right, my students want to do the same. So that's cool. All right, and so now we need to actually make a circle. So I could go here and find the circle command, but I just like to type it in. If you tell GeoGebra what you want it to do, it'll do it for you. You just got to tell it correctly. So right over here, these three dots right above the division sign, if you click that, all right, we can actually just start typing circle and see the command. I can, if I touch it, it'll auto fill the cell. So I'm going to make a circle with center A, okay, capital A. It is case sensitive. And I want the radius to be little r, okay. But now it says undefined because there's a problem now, all right. What we need to do is literally create a circle because there's infinitely many circles that pass through A that have radius little r. But which one do you want? Like we need to actually tell GeoGebra either a plane that contains it or we need to give it any line that is parallel to the axis of that circle. So if you look, if you see right here, that, um, that Y axis, let me bring it back up here, right? This Y axis, I want the circle to kind of do, go this, be in this plane right here. So it's almost like I have to tell GeoGebra that this Y axis is going to be the axis uh, parallel to the axis that's going through A. So if I just type in, watch this, if I type in Y axis right here, you'll see, whoop, axis, if I can spell, you'll see it uh, come right up. Oh, wait, the little r is zero, but see, oh, and now we're talking. Now we got it. We got something going on here, right? So there it is, okay? And uh, so now we can actually go ahead and draw a segment there. Hey, dude, what's up? So uh, he's just joining me here. So now we could actually use the point tool and put a point literally right on that circle, even an AR, like so. And we'll make the segment using the segment tool. I like to show that radius there from B all the way to A. Now that's going to have distance little r, right? And that's going to be the cross section of this of this surface that I'm forming right here. Okay. Again, we just got to think uh, just think intuitively here. Middle school geometry students can do this. So now, now we can actually go right ahead here and. Uh, we could actually put labels on these if you really want. If I touch point A, go to the three dots, I go to where it says caption style, and I'll give it its value. And the black is hard to see, so that's why I'm going to change the color to white. That's a lot better, right? I'll, and uh, for B, I'll just, for point B, let's make it white as well. And why not do the, let's actually do the segment too. Let's touch the segment. There it is. And we'll make it white. Boom. And why not the circle? Let's just go all in, right? Loving it. So now we have a circle, right? Who's, uh, we can actually uh, take this. Whoop. 
let's go back here. We have to go back to the move arrow to move it. We can now move this point here. We can move B around the circle. We could also move uh, this point back and forth here, right? And now we want to spin it. Get to lock at eight or something. There we go. Ah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Point is, we got it here. See how this circle right now, this circle, the way I graphed it, this circle, this circle is in this plane right here, but the, but this y-axis is a line that is parallel to the axis of that circle. So in GeoGebra, if you tell it an axis that's parallel to the axis you want that's going through that point there, it'll do it in that plane, okay? So, uh, so now, let's actually make the surface of our evolution. We wanna make that ring right there, that torus. So we'll go back here, and we need to use the surface command. There is a surface of revolution tool right over here, but that actually just defaults to be in the uh, to go around the x-axis. See it right here, I'm highlighting it. But I'm not, I'm not going to use it. I'm actually going to use the surface command instead. So I go to the go here. I got a above the p. I'm going to click those three dot menu. I'm going to type the word surface in. Surface, and now we want to take a surface. We want GeoGebra to do the following. You see how the circle is named C right there? Turning it on and off, C. I want you to take um, a surface C, and then, oh, wait a minute, I have to, uh, I know, I forgot that, that's right. So before we do that, sorry about this, let's actually make a slider, N equals zero, and then there's a degree symbol right there. It'll default zero to 360. Now we can go back and use the surface command right there. What was the name of the circle again? The circle name was C. So I'll type in C, and we will uh, do what here? We're gonna have it go n degrees. Ooh, now here's 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 the critical piece right here. Which axis is it gonna spin around? Let's try the x-axis. That's the red one. Let's see what this is gonna make. Oops. Ooh, that's doing a sphere, huh? Yeah, we we don't we don't really want that, do we? We want the actual, uh, we want it to go this way, right? Kind of in the ring that way. Oh, it's the Z axis. Got it, got it. So if I change X to Z, see, I don't need all that parametric garbage right there. It's cool to learn when the time is right, but you know what? For, uh, for middle school, it's unnecessary, but oh my goodness, look at that. And look at this. If you even drop this thing and literally just go touch, touch really right here. If you touch this, ed this edge right there, you pick it up. You can actually, okay, now you're going to prove me a liar. You can actually take it. It was working before. Hang on a second. But we'll just do the slider. I was actually able to take it and move it along like so. So you get that whole uh, ring right there. But now the, notice that the bottom half is missing. That's because I need to move the graphics view. And so we'll do that right here and right now. So uh, let's scroll down just a teeny bit. Under others, you have move graphics view. You can actually touch it and literally tap it again and see the arrows going up and down. You can move it up and then see more of the negative z axis down below hit the blue move arrow in the bottom right corner to be done and now you can play with this thing you can walk into it you can do whatever you want and yeah you're getting hungry out there we go now we're talking we were just starting to move it there but we'll go back to the slider and we get it right there and now to fit it right we could we could do some actual measurements measure the little r measure uh, the distance from the center there but to save time let's just play an ar and see what we have. We gotta go out at least so far, right? And, but we can make that little r much, much smaller, which is what we're gonna have to do, right? Hopefully it can fit in there, kinda like so. But you see, that's that's kinda the logic here. So we can have our students literally building the real world uh, around them using uh, uh, augmented reality. Many states, uh, you know, if, you, if your state has canceled standardized testing for the year, and now you have more time to do, you, instead of going mile wide, inch deep in the curriculum. You want to go like say a quarter of a mile wide and then go five miles deep. This is a great place where you can literally do so. Having your kids play in GeoGebra 3D Calculator. And because after all, if we live in a 3D world, why are you always just stuck inside the coordinate plane? Oh, you want to move that back? We can move this back here. Should be able to, but yeah, whatever. Point is, the world is your playground and you can literally do that here in augmented reality. So uh, just to give you just some ideas here, um, you know, if you like it, that's cool. But uh, a lot more resources on GeoGebra if you type in augmented reality. You can find some modeling projects for students. Like, for example, take a, uh, take a cereal bowl and take the slant of it, and that could be a cross-section. That's a linear function. You could spin it about the x-axis, make that bowl, and, and actually uh, build it to scale. 
So uh, talk about domain restrictions, a lot of things. Kids can use the typical Algebra 1 geometry concepts they learn in middle school and high school to build the world around them within GeoGebra 3D Calculator. So that's how it's done. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and um, wish, you and you, wish uh, you and your students much success in this, uh, can, uh, in this time of remote learning.